All right, so let's talk about the gallbladder. Uh, so at first glance, this looks kind of similar to other organs in the GI tract, uh, but there are some differences. So there is no muscularis mucosa layer here, and there's no submucosa. So there's a mucosa layer that's made of the epithelium and the lamina propria, and after that, it goes right to the muscularis externa. So if we look on higher power, uh, we have a epithelial layer of simple columnar cells. Um, at the end of the cells, you can see some microvilli. But these projections here are not villi. This is in a mucosal fold. Uh, remember that villi are, are only going to be in the small intestine for us. Um, so here you can see a thin layer of lamina propria. And on either side of it, uh, there are epithelial cells. And you'll also notice there are no goblet cells here, and there are no crypts, so we're definitely not in the intestine. And here you see smooth muscle, uh, so this is making up the muscularis externa. And deep to that, we have either a serosa or an adventitia, and which one you have depends on where you are in the gallbladder. So remember that uh, part of the gallbladder is adhering to the liver. This is a posterior view of the liver. Uh, so the part that's stuck on the liver, that's going to be surrounded by adventitia. And the free surface of the gallbladder that you see here, uh, that's going to be facing the peritoneum because the uh, gallbladder is an intraperitoneal organ. So here you can see this is all serosa. And I know that because if you look closer at the end of it, you can see this uh, well-defined um, mesothelium. You don't really see the nuclei too well here, but this is a simple squamous epithelium that uh, marks the end of the organ. Uh, if you compare that to, say, out here, where it's kind of ripped off, this might be an adventitia uh, where it's adhering to the organ here, uh, adhering to the liver here. Another feature of the gallbladder is this structure right here. Uh, you might notice that there's a simple columnar epithelium here and the lamina propria. But the muscularis externa doesn't go around this. Uh, it seems to be uh, interrupted over here. So this is a gallbladder diverticulum. And the stuff in the middle might be the remnants of a gallstone. Uh, there's a, one more structure here that Dr. Kramer pointed out. Uh, it's likely a diverticulum as well. So that's this right here. Notice how that's different from these structures over here. These are blood vessels. Uh, you can see probably the nucleus of one of the endothelial cells right here. This is a simple squamous endothelium. Um, and you see the red blood cells in the middle compared to the simple columnar epithelium out here. All right, so let's talk about the pancreas. So this is an organ that's surrounded by connective tissue that you can see out here. And it's arranged in lobules. Uh, you can see an example of one lobule right here. And you know you're in the pancreas if you see islets of Langerhans. That's unique to the pancreas. So that's these little circles of a uh, collection of lightly staining cells. Here's another one over here. You see them here. Uh, so, so if we go on higher power, we can see the serous asini. And this is what we're looking for. Right, so these are serous asini, uh, the pyramidal shaped cells. They have a lot of cytoplasm and they have these granules that we can actually see pretty well in our slide. So here's an example of one asinus. And so the lumen would be in the middle right here. There's another one or two of them together. Here's another one and if you see in the center, there's a lightly staining area with a couple of cells or just one cell. Sometimes you might see some uh, central acinar cells. So I think that's, these are two of them right here. Uh, but you're not going to see it for every acinus. So for example, this one, uh, it just happens to not be in that particular plane of section. Um, I don't see one here either. But let's see if we can find more. So right here, for example, looks like here's an asinus. There's a slightly staining area here. These might be central acinar cells in the lumen. Uh, 
the same as this. Here's the acinus. Looks like this could be the lumen and some centroase in our cells. So those are the cells that are right here, uh, pretty small, and they're part of the intercalated duct, and they secrete bicarb. So other than the serous acini cells and the central acinar cells, there are also ducts. So the ducts are going to be a little lighter staining. Um, there's going to be a lot less cytoplasm, and you're not going to see the granules. So for example, these look like acinar cells. You can see tiny little pink granules, right? There's a lot of cytoplasm. But if you look at these, they stain a lot lighter. It's not so much cytoplasm, and I don't really see any granules. This looks like the cross-section of a small intralobular duct. And keep going. This looks like a nice longitudinal section of an intralobular duct. I wouldn't worry too much about I try to identify the difference between the intercalated ducts and the intralobular ducts on our slide. Um, I mean, I definitely have a hard time trying to differentiate the two. I think if we just, I think they'd have to show you something very clearly like this um, to, for you to say it's intercalated. Because most of the stuff that you're going to see here as a duct is going to be intralobular. So it's like a, a different area. Uh, here's another islet of Langerhans. I don't see any islets over here, so let's take a look. We see some more acinar cells. Right, most of these cells are going to be your acinar cells. This looks like it might be a central acinar cell. So it looks like it's in the middle of the acinus. And actually, right here, you can kind of see a duct just snaking through. So this is probably an intralobular duct. And sometimes you can just see pieces of a duct where it's, you know, lighter staining. Um, and don't forget there are also uh, blood vessels scattered throughout the lobules. Uh, I saw a few of them over here. Okay, let's see. We've got some more acini. This looks like an intralobular duct. Another intralobular duct. Remember, these have a cuboidal epithelium. But blood vessels are going to have a simple squamous epithelium. So here's an endothelial cell nucleus and some red blood cells in the middle. Looks like this might be a blood vessel as well. An endothelial cell. There's another very small blood vessel, then an endothelial cell. There's a serous acini, a couple of central acinar cells. This looks like a small the cross section of an intralobular duct. Another central acinar cell, it's right in the middle of this acinus. So I talked about uh, intralobular ducts that are within a lobule, but there are interlobular ducts as well. So to find those, uh, you have to look in between lobules. This is the only one that's, I think, definitely an interlobular duct. Uh, you can see the cuboidal epithelium. It's surrounded by connective tissue, so it looks like collagen. These are probably fibroblasts. And if we keep looking, uh, these are probably blood vessels, right? They have a flat, simple squamous epithelium lining them. Here's another slide of the pancreas. Um, I actually like the other slide a lot better just because there's a lot more color contrast. Um, but here you can still see it's separated into lobules surrounded by connective tissue. And if we go in and higher, higher power, the same idea. So each one of these are the serous acini. Uh, it's a little harder to see the central acinar cells, again, because we don't have as much uh, contrast. So you can also see some of the ducts here. So 
So we have some more ducts over here. This is probably a cross section of an intralobular duct. And the eyelets are a little harder to see as well, but you can sort of make them out. These areas, these circles with lighter staining um, cells. There's another one over here. And if we go in higher power, again, we see lots of asinine cells all over. This looks like an intralobular duct. I like this section over here in the bottom left corner. You see a lot of the features um, that you expect in a pancreas. So this looks like an islet. We have a lot of serous asini, of course. This looks like an intralobular duct. This is probably a blood vessel, right? So you see very flat um, cells. I think this is an endothelium of a blood vessel. Same with this one. Whereas this is more cuboidal. So this is probably an intralobular duct, a cross section of one. Looks like a blood vessel. Intralobular duct. And there are also some really, really big ducts over here. This looks even columnar. Uh, this looks like a very, the cross section of a very large interlobular duct. Same with this one. This one is more longitudinal section, even though the epithelium is kind of ripped off over here. Uh, I wonder if this might be just part of the main pancreatic duct or something. Here are another couple of large ducts. These guys over here are probably blood vessels. And this is the final slide for the pancreas. Uh, we see the eyelets again here. Here's another one. And this slide is just showing uh, with the special staining, there are a couple different kinds of cells in the eyelets. So the majority of it uh, is beta cells that secrete insulin. So that's the lighter staining ones. And uh, these are the alpha cells that are glucagon secreting. All right, so that's it. I uh, hope you found this helpful, and I'll talk to you next time.